Hi, my name is Autumn from Autumn's Cosplay, and I'm actually working on Alan Walker from D. Gray Man. In this video, I'm going to be going over the first part of building Alan's Exorcist uniform. I am currently doing Alan Walker's second uniform, found in the Noah's Ark arc of the show. This includes the second uniform, plus the kind of halfway transform between a version of Clown Crown. Clown Crown? Oh, clown. Oh my god. Including the in-between of Crown Clown, where I'm going to be working on his glowy hand, his flowy cape, all the weird bits and pieces that go with it. I am so excited to finally be building this costume from D. Gray Man. I have been wanting to cosplay this since 2013, 2014, when I was first cosplaying from D. Gray Man. And now we, here we are almost 10 years later, and I'm finally getting the chance to build it. Specifically in this video, I'm going to be talking about the first half of making Alan's Exorcist uniform. A lot of work went into this, so I'm going kind of step by step and you're going to be seeing everything from things I did well to things I didn't do well and kind of learning together on the way. In this build, I'm going to be learning a lot. I know nothing about zippers, I've never made a glowing claw before, I'm going to learn stuff about wig styling, so I'm going to be kind of showing how I built everything and all the mess ups and things I do on the way because let's be honest, cosplay is a journey. It is learning how to build things and learning how to do things just to make the character that you love. As always, if there's any questions, you can always feel free to ask me. I'm happy to answer them. And uh, let's get started. Okay. I don't know how to put zippers in. So that's what we're learning. But for this zipper here, it's really weird because it's A, it's a jumbo zipper. And then B, it stops halfway down. Cut my first piece down the middle. And then by the time it's folded over with seam allowance with the lining, it might leave enough of a gap that I don't have to worry about it. That's my current thinking. I could be totally wrong though. So we're gonna try this and see how it goes. <laughs> to start off, I had a basic shirt pattern. I got this by taking a t-shirt and tracing everything but the sleeves. This way I could modify it to exactly what I needed for Alan. Next, I took a zipper and tried to get the approximate length of what I needed. This way when I was patterning I could get an accurate fit as the zipper would be on me and everything would fit properly. And then I'm just checking to make sure that the zipper does still work. Next I'm pinning the zipper into the jacket so then I can go and put a loose stitch in to try it on. I went to go sew this and then realized my zipper's inside out. So I'm gonna repin this, and then I'm gonna go sew it. All right, so I finished putting the zipper in and I finished putting all the pieces together. Um, I changed my shirt, so then when I put it on, it's a little bit more realistic. The big sweater wouldn't fit my proportions right. And then I also put on a sports bra, which is really similar to what I'll wear when I'm wearing this costume. As I thought, once I put the zipper in and I kind of put a really quick, just kind of top stitch as if this was flipped over. It does create that little bit of separation that I was looking for. I just have to make sure I do it good when I get to the real one. So we're gonna try this on and see how it fits and make any alterations from there. The top things I'm looking for is, honestly, is kind of a little bit of a boxy look. This fits on Alan really straight and it has this bit of a fold at the waist. So I'm not looking for something super form fit. Here it's very straight, very boxy. So I'm kind of looking for a nice straight line. Might seem easy to achieve, but this kind of gets in the way of that. So I kind of have to play around with it. But we'll see how this turns out. Oh yeah, and because this is a big zipper, I can kind of undo it and it'll be fine. Later I'll look at putting a actual stopper in it but it's so big and it's so chunky that it's super easy to thread back together again like Humpty Dumpty.
All right, so I'm looking at this. Remember I said here, there we've got this bit of extra fabric, so I'm gonna make a dart in here. Also made this way too long, so the zipper needs to stop about there. But when this fabric is kind of lifted up, the rest of down here seems pretty okay. There's quite a bit of room in here and the back as well, it's pretty straight. So what I have to do now is lower the collar. So I'm gonna take this all out, lower the collar, add the dart here and shorten the zipper and then I'll restitch it back together, see how it looks and go from there. My other mirror was dirty, so I'm gonna do it in here again. Basically what I did is I've added the dart to this side. Also, I added this line in here. This basically is right where my sleeve line is, so my sleeves can attach properly. I'm gonna need to add extra seam allowance to that. I will get there. Then, on here, I drew my natural neckline, so then it's all set. I also added a pin here, um, cause that's about where I want the zipper to end. And I added my skirt below, just so I can kind of see how it all fit together. Now the last part that I'm happy about is that especially when I kind of take a deep breath and let it sink, I do get that little bit of bellowing at the bottom. I do get it with the zipper, but the zipper's kind of restricting how it looks. So it should be fixed once the zipper's taken out. Okay, I think third third time's the charm. So again, I'm happy with this. I need this to come in just a little bit, but it should be okay, I can just cut it off. And then, you know, make the dart look better, but small cup, so I'm not too concerned. But for the rest of the skirt, um, it's finally at a good height. This is starting to buckle out the way I want it to. So from now, I'm pretty happy with it. I can start patterning where all of the bias tape's gonna go. Cause oh my, there's so much. The first thing I did was take off the mock-up and made some markings that were important to me. So this is where the zipper ended and where the dart was located on the pattern. Next, I took the seam ripper and I started to take the whole thing apart. That way I could use this as my main pattern on my fabric. I have two pieces here. I have the front panel and the back panel. Next up, I used a black galaxy twill to start cutting out the pieces of Alan's jacket. Because the back piece is symmetrical, I just used half of it, folded it over, and then continued to cut it out so everything was the same. Then using the same material, I cut out both front panels for the jacket. I did leave a little bit more on the front as there was that fold over where the zipper was. I just needed to take it into account. For the other side panel, I just used the same piece that I cut out, that way there wasn't any alterations from the extra seam allowance that I gave on that front panel. Next up was to cut the interfacing. So the interfacing I'm just using to help stiffen up the front piece or the front panels. Once I had my fused interfacing onto my front panels, it was time to add the dart. The dart was added by taking my pattern piece and slowly marking where the dart would be located. Once that was taken off, I was able to pin the dart together and throw it through my sewing machine. Okay, so what I have here is I have now cut out, interfaced, and done the darts on both front panels here. So these are done. Next up, I'm gonna work on the 
zipper, the enclosed zipper on the left panel. There should be one right here. And I've never really been good at zippers. I have a notorious route for being bad at them. So I've done a couple of practice ones here and I'll show you what I've done. The only issue I have is that it's not only an enclosed zipper, it's a jumbo zipper enclosed zipper. Yes, so it makes it a little bit more complicated, but that's okay. So to start off, I have folded over and ironed the edge here, and then I've sewing pinned this in here. So I have a reference because the, the length of the zipper is in reference to this. I'll use this to figure out where I need to do the zipper and close it. And if it doesn't work out and I destroy this piece, then I haven't done the rest of the work of it already. I can just replace this piece and not cry about everything else. So I did two kind of trial runs. The first one I did was a bias tape outline zipper. And this one worked, it worked well. The only thing is, is that it's gonna make it really difficult to do these edges down here. So what I decided to do is I'm gonna do a regular enclosed zipper and then just stitch the bias tape around afterwards. Now the other enclosed zipper I did, figured out my measurements. Because the jumbo it, zipper is five eighths of an inch. And when I put this under, the zipper in and of itself works. I can just stitch this down. So I'm gonna do it like this. And then I'm gonna take my bias tape and go around the edge because then I can kind of fold it the way that I want and make a nice edge all the way around and it should look okay. This is the current plan. I just have to do this now. So first off, I tried to flatten out the piece so I could see where my zipper needed to lay and then put a piece of bias tape down so I had a good reference on where my embedded zipper needed to be. Once I had that figured out, I used pins to mark the top and the bottom of where the zipper would be so then I could see it on the other side. Flattening this out made it much easier to draw the next pattern. So this is the basic pattern for making an embedded zipper. This way you could have some fabric that folded over and something to stitch to instead of just cutting out a rectangular shape. To make the first cut, I used a seam ripper to make the initial hole, and then I was able to use my scissors to make the rest of the cuts. From here, I ironed the piece, and I could start pinning in my zipper. Next was placing the zipper into place, and then again, I'm just checking to make sure that the zipper works. Next step is I was making the bias strip that would go around the entire piece. So I took my white galaxy twill and cut strips so then I could fold them over and make kind of a mock bias tape. Keep in mind, this is not a regular bias tape as it's not cut on the bias, but because I'm just doing straight lines, it's totally okay. So I'm carefully trying to place this and pin it into place, go around the zipper while giving enough room for the actual zipper head to move. Once completed, I just took the bias tape and I flipped it over the edge. That way it would hide any of the raw edges. But I was actually super unhappy how this turned out. So I started again. This time I used the idea of an embedded zipper and made the same thing, but in white and then pressed all the edges. That way I could have an embedded zipper on top of another embedded zipper and there wouldn't be any of the creases or folds from the bias tape going around the edges it would just be a square okay so this is my second attempt and I'm still not happy with it one of the biggest things is I tried to stitch over here and I wanted the zipper to be covered at the bottom and I 
can't stitch over the zipper. I kind of forgot that part. And the same thing is kind of happening at the top. And it's causing these ugly lines and I don't like it. And unfortunately with uniforms, everything has to be like very crisp and perfect. So what I'm gonna do, I've come up with plan three. I'm going to take this and I'm going to lengthen it on the top and the bottom so it's not covering the zipper. I'm basically gonna make like a little flap thing and the flap will sit on top um, kind of to cover the bottom of the zipper here and then it'll just be stitched over so it kind of creates like a little a little zipper a little zipper pocket and hopefully that should give me enough room <laughs> to stitch down all four sides comfortably and easily and then cover up where the zipper starts because if I lift this up this is kind of what the bottom of the zipper looks like and it's kind of ugly. I mean, I don't wanna like fabric shame my garment, but it doesn't look very good. So with that, it was time to seam rip this and try again. This is why it was really important that I stitched down the embedded zipper on the black first. That way when I'm taking out all these pieces, the zipper is still in place. We're just working on the decorative piece. And again, just gonna make sure that zipper works. Next is to take the measurements of my existing piece and do a little bit of math to figure out exactly what lengths I need. So how I got this math was I took the length of the inside, which was currently six and a quarter inches. I took one of those little zipper pocket pieces, which were three eighths of an inch. So six and a quarter plus three eighths plus three eighths equals seven inches in length. So I cut my piece the same way that I did before. I pressed it and it was ready to put onto the jacket. Now this time I wanted zero movement. So I took a little bit of help from my leather tools and I used something called Tanner's Bond. Tanner's Bond is a really lightweight tape that is double-sided and the brown one is specifically the repositional tape. So that way I could stick it down and it wouldn't have a permanent bond, but I could move the piece as I needed, but it would still hold quite strong while I went around and stitched the entire piece. So placing this down, testing the zipper, as I can see there was a little bit of gap issues so using the Tanner's Bond I was able to place it down exactly where I needed it to be and then retest the zipper again as many times as needed. I decided at the end to put a little bit of a zipper pocket at the top. I know you don't usually see that or that the zipper will be all the way up most of the time but then that way when it was pulled down it was able to look clean. Next, I used a little bit of super glue and the bottom of a sewing pin, and I just tucked the little edges of all the corners into place. This is a really tough spot as the interfacing was holding onto the bond, but just not enough that I liked. This is a more up close look on how it ended up. As you can see, it is stitched on both the inside and the outside. I have this little zipper pocket here so when the zipper goes all the way down that way you can't see the bottom of the zipper but yet it still has that stitch line like I had the problem with last time. Now when it zips all the way up to the top it does have this little bit of a buckle and this stopper here but I'm okay with it because I'd rather this look clean um, when this is pulled down. That's see how it's covering it. When I pulled it down this left it exposed so I kind of had to pick the lesser of two evils. I have finally done that and uh, I'm really excited. Okay, and with that, we're done part one. I was gonna try and put this all together in one video, but then I realized that it was gonna be like 45 minutes long minimum. And so what I'm gonna do is just split it up into two, possibly three, because there's so much that went into 
just the Exorcist uniform alone. That is it for this one. Look forward to the second one where I talk about building the back panel, doing all the top stitching on the uniform, adding the collar, so on and so forth. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, again, just comment below and I can help you out or send me a message. And uh, yeah, have a good day.